I can't believe I almost forgot this part. Got a small... This is this is the... I almost forgot this part. Got their little sister, who was like five, six years old, gaslit this child, where Manti met this little girl, and this little girl kept talking about how much she missed her aunt that never existed. That's how deep this went. All right. You saw from the title of this video that this is about the Manti Teo documentary. And this is going to be a video about how society holds certain demographics accountable or the lack thereof simply based upon their identity. And this documentary was hospital grade extra strength proof of this. So for those of you that you know get a bit of a background, you can watch the documentary on Netflix. They do a great job of of framing uh, Manti Teo, who really, you know, I really wasn't in, got into college football at around that time more so than any other time because that was the time of you know Johnny Manziel and it was really a fun time to be into college football. And Manti Teo was one of the best defensive players of that generation. Got better every year, he developed, and he was somebody who was also an outstanding citizen. He was everything that the NCAA at that time claimed that they wanted in a player, and he grew up in Hawaii, you know, Samoan, Polynesian background, and unlike most Polynesian people, when they go into NCAA football, they go to usually uh, USC, that's sort of like the hub for Polynesian football players. He decided to go to South Bend, Indiana to play for Notre Dame, which look at a map how far away that is. And just culture shock and loneliness and being literally 18 years old in a place so far away from home. You got nobody, you know, the early stages of Facebook that was happening at that time. He started talking to some girl. And over a couple of years, they developed a relationship that ended up turning into a really strong feeling relationship. Turns out the whole time it was some guy. Right. Right all that. Yeah. Who was wanted to feel, oh, he was. And this is how they framed it. They framed it this way in the documentary, which is infuriating. He just wanted to, he just wanted to feel what it was like to be a woman because, you know, all religion and culture didn't support his sexuality created this fictional character Lene. i totally felt fear i didn't have courage to just be like this is who i am oh my god <sighs> and basically this person who psychotically like out of a movie was able to do a pretty damn good female voice when they had a pretty deep man voice the whole time was leaving like voicemails and it is shocking the voice like i you completely can understand how it's like oh yeah that's definitely a girl and they said they were in a car accident that they were in a coma and that they convinced manti that from talking to her every day in a coma he brought her back to life and it's like oh but she's got leukemia now and then the day that his grandmother actually died Later that day, this guy posing as the brother said that, oh, the girlfriend died too. And then like six months later was like, oh, I came back to life or whatever. the f Or like, oh, I was running away from the mo- I don't- ugh. And it ruined Manti Teo's entire career. He dropped in the draft. It cost him millions of dollars. He developed um, an anxiety disorder from everything that uh, had happened, just like- the trauma, imagine the trauma of thinking that somebody that you that you spoke to that was like a safety blanket for you when you were in a place that you were so uncomfortable that you were so far away from home, you felt like you really had nobody. Imagine then just finding out that person was dead the same day that you find out your grandma is dead. And then them being alive and it being fake, like you don't understand it at the time that it happened. Because just the way the media framed it. But anyway. Fucking anyway. 
and just in the documentary, I'm going to, hopefully there, I've gotten some clips. I can sort of play them in here throughout just to sort of sprinkle this stuff in. But I knew the framing was going to be off from the very beginning because the first thing that Netflix puts up is, is at the time of this recording, people were unaware that Renaya was living as a transgender person, like a trigger warning for misgendering. So we're already worried about people who are going to look at this story and are going to complain that they're like, oh, can you believe that they're calling Renaya he? Like, misgendering? Respect the pronouns? I can't. So already there's just like this creating a sense of we're making this person, this monster who lied about car accidents, comas, cancer, and death. A victim. Don't forget they're a victim too. Don't forget that this 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 guy's a victim too because he was born a guy and wants to be a girl. The worst part is how it ended. Where they allowed this monster, this sociopath, this piece of garbage to position himself as some sort of potential inspiration. For the LGBTQ community. You think I'm joking. You think I'm exaggerating. The exact words is. I could be an inspiration. To people. I could be a sign of hope. For people. What? 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 (sighs) Absolutely. Zero. Accountability. And the only reason. If the roles were reversed, you don't think that they would just position Manti Teo as being the biggest monster on earth? Can you believe this man did this to this innocent woman? That would be the framing of it. But no, because somebody wants to cut their dick off, they're still a victim. Oh, but don't forget that they're just living their best life and that this was about them, them trying to be their true self. I fucking hate Hollywood I hate Netflix thank god I use somebody else's account and it's not my money not like I use Netflix even really at all anyway I just you know comedy specials and this documentary at this point god no accountability it's all like it's all like the framing of like it's it's Let's think about what this person was feeling. Forget the guy who grew up poor in Hawaii. Who since he was five years old. Would work with his dad. Till 10 o'clock at night. Every day. To be the best football player he could be. Got got 50 scholarship offers. Out of high school. Got, Got Heisman Trophy finalist. Freaking was set to make millions of dollars. Had it all ripped away. All that hard work ripped away. That's not even anything compared to what this brave and beautiful transgender person went through. Makes me fucking sick. It makes me so fucking sick. No accountability. That can be, There's no demographic or community held less accountable... For the bullshit. For the garbage. That members of it participate in more than the transgender community. A hundred percent. Prove me otherwise. You get stories about transgender people. Trying to meet up with nine, six, and one year olds. For sexual activity in a park. Instagram messages as proof. Them showing up to the park. As proof? What do you what do you think happened? The person got, got taken away and all the cops said to the person in this freaking bullshit, the person that caught them was to make sure to respect their pronouns. Fuck off. Fuck off. Unbelievable. So before so before you're like, oh, this is one example, it goes that far. The lack of accountability goes that far. It's gross. It's fucking gross. 
So to that Renaya guy, that catfish manti tail, go fuck yourself. Okay? You should be locked up in an institution for the severe mental deficiencies that you have to be that sociopathic. I don't give a flying fuck how much you were struggling with your identity and sexuality. That's no excuse. I know that all the activists are going to position it and frame it like it's an excuse. I know Netflix gave you a fucking pass that I that was unfathomable to watch. Like at some point I was like this is going to turn on. They're going to turn on this person at some point. No, never happened. Never happened. <laughs> ah, but then watch, watch watch some other documentaries that Netflix puts out, and that these goofballs put out, and tell and tell me how people that have done less, people have done less with less evidence, where it's more even ambiguous that something even remotely happened. But look at what they are, what they present as. Spoiler alert, it's usually something like this. And see how it gets framed. See how those see how those sit-down interviews get taken. See what kind of people get brought in to talk about it. Not just one giant pass. Yeah, they just ruined somebody's life, pretending to be somebody else, got cancer and died, was in a coma, came back to life. <laughs> Created, created like seven or eight other fake Facebook accounts to pose as family members. Got a small, this is, this is the, I almost forgot this part. Got their little sister who was like five, six years old. Gaslit this child. I can't believe I almost forgot this part. Gaslit this like five, six year old little girl into thinking that the fake woman was real and that they died to the point where Manti met this little girl and this little girl kept talking about how much she missed her aunt that never existed. That's how deep this went. Can't believe I almost forgot that part. That was the most infuri- I That part infuriated me so much. It like went into my brain and then died in my brain. From how from how angry it made me. It just disappeared. It made me so angry that I immediately just blocked it out. Unbelievable. No accountability though. They just they say that part and they skip right over it. They sit there, they're sitting there with their freaking with their with their man tits. <laughs> man tits and terrible makeup. Like, I convinced my my little sister. And like giggling. Like, smiling about it. Oh my god. No accountability. None. Why? Because they want to cut their dick off. And they want to wear dresses. And have long hair. And and do little slow motion woman Polynesian dances. In their final scene in the documentary. With, with nice little music over the top of it. Like, they're such... Like, oh my god, look at... Look at them living their best life now. Unfucking real, dude. Ugh. So f- Ugh. Okay. Make sure to thumbs up this video and leave a comment in the comment section. And subscribe if you haven't already. There'll be a subscription button on my chin and some recommended videos on either side of my head. And I'm going to leave right now, edit this video, and post it before I get really angry and just destroy all my recording equipment. Thank you for watching.